This is concept 14C. Um, in this concept, we will be talking about the final um, transformation for this unit, which is going to be rotations, and we will also get into our composite transformations. So let's just talk about rotations to start with. A rotation will be a when a figure is turned about a fixed point, which we are going to call the center of rotation. In that case, then the angle of rotation will be the number of degrees a figure is rotated. So let's talk about notation for rotation. We are going to use a capital R for a rotation. Remember, a lowercase is for a reflection. Um, and then in our subscript, we are always going to write the angle of rotation first. So in this case, we're going to use an angle of rotation of 90 degrees. And then that needs to be followed up by the center of rotation. In this case, the origin, which would be the center of our coordinate plane, 0, 0. So, for example here, if I look at the picture to the right, my center of rotation was the origin, and I was going 90 degrees. So if I were to take the point AB and rotate it 90 degrees, that is going to go to the left there, to the next quadrant. So you might think here, when we have a positive angle, we are always going to rotate counterclockwise. Um, so that goes against what our normal, we always want to go to clockwise, but we're going to be going counterclockwise. So if it's a positive angle, we'll always go counterclockwise. If it was negative 90, then that means we will go clockwise. Some other definitions that we need to know for rotations that we're going to use here is going to be a regular polygon. A regular polygon is a figure whose uh, sides and vertex angles are all congruent. So for example, um, this is a regular triangle because all the angles have been marked congruent and all the sides are congruent. And so we can use that here in our next example. It says, which angle of rotation maps A onto F? And so if I look at this figure here, I notice it is a regular polygon because all the sides um, are going to be congruent. So that means I can split this up by uh, drawing segments from each of the vert vertex across uh, to its corresponding one to get eight congruent triangles. And so if I think about this, that means that each of those triangles will have an angle of rotation, or sorry, will have a central angle um, that are congruent. So since we know that all the way around is 360 degrees, and all those uh, central angles have to be the same, then that means I can take 360 degrees divided by eight um, that means each of those central angles is 45 degrees. Well, since we know that we are trying to map A onto F, I, that just means I need to count how many triangles there are between A to F. So if I go ahead and look here, I notice there are three triangles. So I can take that central angle of 45 degrees times three, and that means the angle of rotation that maps A onto F would be 135 degrees. So in this table here, we're going to go over some of the common angles or rotations and their rules for how to change their coordinates. Um, so if you look here, we have a 90 degree rotation, which we kind of already talked about, 180 degree rotation, and 270 degree rotation. Now since they're all positive, we will be going from uh, counterclockwise with the rotations. And remember, we're always going from our pre-image to image. So if you notice like here in the 90 degree uh, rotation picture, my image is there in quadrant one, and then quadrant two is there, uh, has our image, since they are marked with the A prime, B prime, C prime, and, that, and so on. So we look here, we notice that, I'm just gonna give the example of A, and the pre-image is at coordinates two, one, but then in the image at A prime, my coordinates have switched to negative one, two. And so if I think about this, notice what it's happening to my coordinates here is that we're flipping the position of those and then changing the sign of the first. And so instead of 2, 1, I'm going to switch that and make that 1, 2, and then change the sign of the first to make it negative 1, 2. This is our rule for the coordinates um, to make sure that we have that 90 degree rotation correct. I can also check and make sure that I did this um, rotation correctly by drawing a segment from the pre-image to the center of rotation, and then from the center of rotation to the image. And if I notice here, that does create a 90 degree angle. And that's just proving that I did 
uh, this rotation correct. Now notice here that name degrees is we can think of that as like one quadrant. So you see how the original pre-image is being shifted one as being rotated one uh, quadrant uh, counterclock or sorry counterclockwise there. Um, that's just a way for us to check. So if we go to our next one, we have 180 degrees. Well, we know 180 degrees would be like two quadrants. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of do the same trick here. Um, you notice our image pre-image is starting in uh, quadrant four and then our image is in quadrant two. If I draw the segments from A to the origin, which is our cent center of rotation, and then from that center of rotation to the image, I notice that they are creating a straight line, or 180 degrees. So this is just a way for us to check and make, think about what type of rotation happened here. If I go and write those coordinates, I notice that the coordinates here for A are at two, negative one, and then for a prime, that is at negative two, one. So if I think about my rules for coordinates, all we're doing here is that we're changing uh, the signs of both the coordinates. So uh, the x was positive, the y was negative, but if I switch those now, it is a negative two, positive one. And so if, to do a 180 degree rotation, all I gotta do is switch those coordinates. Same thing with 270 degrees. Notice we're starting with the pre-image in quadrant one, but since it's 270 degrees, that would be three quadrants. So I go one, two, three counterclockwise, and I end up in quadrant four. And so that would be right there, 270 degrees. Notice like that does form a right angle there. So this would be the same as like a negative 90 degree or degree rotation clockwise. But remember if it's, positive, we are going to go counterclockwise. For coordinates here, if I write my coordinates of A, I'm at two, one, and then A prime is at one, negative two. So this time we're gonna flip the coordinates, but change the sign of the second uh, coordinate. So for a 270 degrees, close to the 90 degrees, but instead of changing the sign of the first, we change the sign of the second. I would highly recommend memorizing these rules. Um, it'll make it a lot easier for you on the practice and then also on your test. Pause the video here and review these as needed. Up to this point, we have been considering just single transformations. So we think translations, reflections, and rotations. But now we also can combine those single transformations to create a new transformation called a composite transformation. A composite or composition transformation is a series of transformations that are formed in a, or that are performed in a specific order to create a new transformation. We are going to note, denote this by using an open circle. Um, this is used. This will be able to indicate that this is a composition of functions. In particular, we should always read that open circle. You can just replace the open circle with the word follows or after. So for example, if I look at the examples of the right here, um, we have a T to one five, so that would be a translation by going right one and then up five, if we remember our notation for translations. And then we also have the R with the Y equals X. This right here is going to be a reflection. Remember, we usually use a lowercase r for reflection, um, but in this case, we know it's going to be reflection because the subtext there is a line. So that means that would be a reflection over the line y equal to x. But it does ask, what does this notation mean? So if we replace that open circle with one of our words, this could be read as a shift of right one and then up five after reflecting the image over the line y equal to x. So you can think of this as reading from right to left. I always like to mark that uh, furthest right transformation as one, and then the second one is two, so I remember the order that I'm doing those. Um, so it's the opposite of what you think it would be, but this would be to replace that open circle with the word follows or after, and it makes a little bit more sense. In certain cases, a combination of transformations can become a single transformation. So it's important for us to note, so some composition of functions 
multiple would be the same thing as just a single transformation. So let's look at example one here. Um, if we notice, we start with the pre-image in quadrant one, and then the image ends up in quadrant two. So it, we have some spaces we need to fill in the blank. So remember, we're going to start with that first transformation, which would be to the right of that open circle. So if we think about how we get from the pre-image to that uh, pentagon in quadrant two, well, that's the same thing as just reflecting over the y-axis, since those spaces are the same apart, about one space, or sorry, two spaces in this case. And so that means that we would have a reflection over the y-axis first. But then if we look at that pentagon in quadrant two, and then how does it end up as the image, well, this would just be a reflection over the x-axis. And so this would be the same thing as doing a y-axis reflection and then that will, then doing second a, a reflection over the x-axis. So remember that's read as a reflection of the x-axis following a reflection of the y-axis. But if we look at the pre-image and the image and we look at those points, we notice that if I go and connect those points, that is the same thing as have, having to rotate the pre-image um, 180 degrees and then we would end up with the image. So in this case, any translation or rotation, this is important to note, any translation or rotation can be expressed as two reflections. Let's look at this again. In example two, we note here that if I were to take the first triangle and I were to have reflected it over the line y equal, or sorry, x equal to negative three, I would end up here with that triangle A prime, the image. And I know this because there is exactly four spaces between those two points as I've kind of marked there. And so if I were to do that again, how do I get from B prime to B double prime? Well, I also note that this is just another reflection, in this case over the line x equal to two. And that's because there's the same distance between those two points. So we did one reflection and then we did another reflection. And we notice here, those two lines that we have there, they are parallel lines because they're both vertical. But and if we look at the original pre-image to the final image, we get that, if I look at those two points, that this is the exact same thing as if I would have just shifted that triangle to the right 10 units. What this means here is that a composition of reflections over two parallel lines is equivalent or the same as a single translation. So anytime where we do a reflection over two parallel lines, that would be the exact same thing as doing a shift. Um, it depends on the direction that we want. In this case, it would be a shift to the right five. I mean a shift of 10. In the final example here, we look, we notice that we look at that first image if we go from the pre-image of A, and then we reflect over that line that I did here in the purple, we notice so it's A prime, and then we were to reflect over the line B that I did here in red, we notice that we have a rotation here. So instead of, uh, and like in the last case, where a double reflection over parallel lines give us a translation, in this case, if we have two reflections over intersecting lines, we are going to end up with a rotation. And so if we think about this again, we have that first triangle, we flip over a line A, it gives me A prime, but then I took that and reflected it over line B. That would be the exact same thing as taking the original triangle and then rotating it, uh, in this case, that particular angle measure to the left there. Notice the measure of the angle, so the angle of rotation, is just going to be double the angle formed by the two intersecting lines. Uh, I think this picture is kind of cool and kind of outlines that. Um, the key here is, though, to know that two reflections over intersecting lines will end up with a rotation. Okay, I think that's it for these notes. Please be sure that you talk to your teacher and get the 14C teacher talk. Uh, this is a really important one, so please be sure to ask any questions. Uh, good luck on your practice.